7 of high school football action here on Bright House Networks alongside Bakersfield, Californian prep editor Zach Ewing. I'm Matt Alvarez. North and East coming up at the top of the hour. But first, we've got a lot of ground to cover, Zach. Uh, let's get right to it. Starting off with our game of the week last week, Wasco visiting Bakersfield Christian. And boy, uh, that game looked like it had implications. It could be a shootout, but it was over early, Zach. Yeah, what a performance by Wasco, huh? I mean, the Tigers... Uh, took a punch in the mouth from BCHS right away, as we're going to see on this opening drive. Uh, just a, a, a real efficient drive from Bakersfield Christian. They score on a third down and goal play here uh, and, t and take a 7 nothing lead. And like you said, it looked like we were in store for a shootout. And then it takes Wasco one play to answer back. Yeah, Austin T. Harina, I mean, he was our one of our co-players of the week. 182 rush yards, five touchdowns, six PATs. Kid was all over the field. There you see his first touchdown. Here's his second touchdown coming up as he bounces off a couple of poor tackles, little uh, arm tackles there. That Coach Barnett certainly wouldn't be happy about at BCHS. And then you see the pick, and I believe this one goes back for six, if I'm, if I'm correct. And great play by the uh, Wasco defense. I mean, their defense was flying to the ball. Their offense couldn't be stopped. It was just a, uh, it was a long night for Bakersfield Christian on homecoming. Yeah, and here's Tiarina catching a pass. I mean, he can do that too. And Wasco, kind of like Tehachapi, which is a game that we'll probably be talking a lot about in a couple of weeks. When they need to pass, they can. And when they do, they usually surprise you. And, uh, and Bakersfield Christian certainly caught by surprise a couple of times. Here's Austin Tiarina's fifth touchdown, his third on the ground. And again, as you can see, not an easy guy to bring down. Bakersfield Christian couldn't do it. Wasco wins it 48-7. to now, we talked about on the broadcast, Zach, uh, myself, Vance, Palm, and Brian Adams, about them using that double reverse in such tight quarters. Usually that wouldn't necessarily fool the defense because when you have a double wing, they're so close to each other. But Wasco made it work to the T, and Bakersfield Christian's defense would, looked clueless for a while. Now, I think in, sometimes, especially when you have a guy like T Arena, the defense will clue in so much on, on one guy. Uh, that if you fake the ball to him or even hand the ball to him like in a double reverse situation, that it sucks up a lot of defenders. And, uh, and that's what happened in this, in this case, and it opens up uh, big gains for Wasco, obviously. Well, T. Harina makes six of seven extra points, like you said. The Tigers rack up more than 400 yards of rushing. Uh, let's talk about some other games last week. Frontier, another tough loss, 21-17 against Liberty, Zach. Yeah, I mean, two weeks ago we did their game with Ridgeview where uh, the Wolfpack scored in overtime and stopped them on a two-point conversion to win that one. And then this week, a touchdown uh, given up to Corbin Jounty with about a minute and a half left lifts Liberty 21-17. Tough time for Frontier right now. I mean, they've had those two tough losses in a row. Now all of a sudden, as we'll talk about, you got Bakersfield coming up. You have Stockdale coming up with DJ Martin back next week. Uh, it, really, really rough time for the Titans. So this is a time for Frontier to bounce back uh, if, if they can, you know, against probably the best team in the, uh, the, best team in the Valley right now in Bakersfield High School. Uh, let's talk about Foothill and East. Seven interceptions. I mean, if East you know, doesn't throw seven interceptions, I think that they have this one in the bag against a very good Foothill team. You would think so. I mean, but then the, the age-old question is, do you, do you credit them for sticking in it with it, despite throwing seven interceptions, or do you fault them for throwing the seven interceptions in the first place? Uh, a lot of credit to Foothill's defense. They did what they needed to do to win the game. Absolutely. But East, you know, you've got to think that if they didn't make those mistakes, they would have, could, have, could have possibly pulled out a win there. And now we're going to see them at the top of the hour at home hosting North High School. So uh, keep your TV sets tuned to that. Chris Hannibal. He has a big day. He leads uh, BHS past independence, Zach. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a blowout uh, you know, to begin with. Um, Bakerfield, 21 nothing at the end of a quarter against Independence, a team we expected them to handle, and, uh, and it looked like they were going to. Credit to Independence, though, uh, with their quarterback Preston Hodges carrying the ball 30 times and then throwing another 10 or 12 times. Uh, that was really a good performance by Independence to stick in that game. Uh, you know, they ne never really got to the point where you're thinking upset, but they kept B BHS on its toes for four quarters. Highland uh, taking down North 14-7, to and, you know, you look at this uh, Highland team, they get back to their winning ways. Finally, North and East, it's going to be a good matchup of two teams that uh, are, are coming off a loss looking to get back on the, in the W column, but, however, Highland able to take down North, a strong defensive effort, 14-7. to Yeah, the SEYL, very deep, very balanced, at least once you get by Garces, which we expect to be the favorite, but uh, we saw that again, some good defenses. Uh, and, and Highland able to beat North 14-7. to Zach Pasqua injured late in that game, tore his MCL, oh, wow. and, and he's out for this week against Garces, which we can talk about in a little bit and perhaps longer than that. Um, but, you know, credit to the Scots to play some defense too, and that, that's going to make things tough on, on Garces and on other teams. Well, speaking of Garces, I mean, they picked up another huge win. Golden Valley seems to be on the decline as of yet. You know, 58-12, to Garces picks up a win over the Bulldogs. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the machine rolls on for the Garces offense, right? Uh, 58 points, ho-hum. Uh, <laughs> big effort from, from Philip Anspaugh, the quarterback, and from running backs Nick Valewald and, uh, and, and the rest of their guys. And, boy, like we said, Garces is a big favorite in a good Southeast Yosemite League, and they should roll into the playoffs at, at, with a 9-1 and record, barring any big upsets. Well, here's one that wasn't an upset. South beat West 35-7. to I mean, South, uh, they, they put another win in the W column, but West... How come they can't score, Zach? They, they have just been – where is their offense? Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's a school where traditionally you have a lot of speed, a lot of good athletes, and Chad Greider, their coach, trying to take advantage of that, switched to a, to a more running-based offense this year, trying to get his get guys out in space using more option and things like that, and it just hasn't worked. And, uh, you know, maybe that's a personnel problem. Maybe it's guys just still getting acclimated to, to the new scheme. But for whatever reason, West really, really struggling on offense. Let's take a look at some of our stat leaders now as we have Austin T. Harina from Wasco. Like we said, 182 rush yards, 106 reception yards, five touchdowns, six PATs. And I mean, that's a... Uh, that's an all-around effort right yeah. there, isn't well, it? <laughs> what, what is that total of? 35 points, something like that? Is that what you said? Yeah, th we had 30, everything for Wasco except for their last 12 points, I think, were, were T. Arena. So My goodness. Very impressive performance. Chris Hannibal of Bakersfield, we mentioned 10 carries, 176 rushing yards. For the math impaired, that's 17.6 yards per carry. That's pretty good. Wow. Three touchdowns on the ground. Also very efficient through the air. Seven of nine passing for 83 yards and two went for touchdowns. BHS going to be very tough to beat. One of the teams that might be able to beat him is Centennial. You know, that, that should be a good game that we look forward to uh, talking about in the future. But Bryce Royal from Centennial goes 19 carries, 133 rush yards. So a good effort there from the uh, Golden Hawks. And, you know, let's uh, take a look at this week's big game, Zach. We've got North taking on East got Highland at Garces. I mean, let's start with our game of the week, actually, at North and East. Yeah, North and East is going to be a good one. Um, it, it's, it's Boy, it's a defensive battle. It's going to be a little bit too close to call. That's, uh, that's a, it's going to be one where we're going to pick differently, I have a feeling, and, and one of us is going to be right and the other one's going to be wrong. Yeah, it, we'll get to our predictions later on in the broadcast, but however, Highland and Garces, you know, we talked about it off the air, but we'll save it for the viewers just a little <laughs> right. bit later. Highland taking on Garces, uh, what do you feel on that one, Zach? Hey, can Highland's defense challenge Garces, and can they do it enough uh, to stay in the game without Zach Pasqua? That's going to be the big question. It, it will be tough for the Scots. You know, BHS taking on Frontier, I think that's where you're going to be tomorrow night. Zach, I will correct? be at Frontier, and I expect the Titans to play pretty well. I mean, this is a wounded animal with its back against the wall after two close losses. Can they beat Bakersfield? I don't know about that, but I do think Frontier plays well. Also in the SWYL, we have Stockdale and Liberty. Uh, boy, Stockdale, one more chance to win without DJ Martin. Liberty riding high at 5-1. and one. South taking on Ridgeview. South is also riding high, coming off a big win. But they're taking on a Ridgeview team that... Uh, that's a pretty tough team. Right, no, no doubt, especially defensively. And uh, speaking of tough teams, Centennial offensively put up 61 points against Stockdale last week. Now they take on Independence, a tough one for the Falcons. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about your rankings, Zach. You have Bakersfield ranked first, Centennial second, uh, Garces, Ridgeview, Tatchby. No Wasco in there. Yeah, I have Wasco sitting right at about number six in the county. It's, it's tough to put him ahead of Tatchby when Tatchby took care of him pretty good last year. Uh, obviously, these things are up for debate. I like... Uh, Bakersfield is the number one team in the section. You can see my central section rankings at bakersfield.com slash schoolhouse Zach uh, all week long. They go up every Tuesday afternoon. Um, we have a few more stat leaders I think we can look at from last week. Let's take a look at Corbin Jounty of Liberty. We mentioned that winning touchdown. Well, he scored all three touchdowns for the Patriots in 186 total yards. And then we had the machine from Delano kept on rolling. Yeah, Zach Perigo, 213 rush yards, two touchdowns. You know, some guy who doesn't get... A lot of face time is Tim Harris over at Miramonte. He actually had a great game, 29 carries, 160 rush yards. And let's talk about uh, Destin Penn over at Foothill, two interceptions. How'd Tyler Ferguson do at Ridgeview? Tyler Ferguson, 9 and 12 passing for 172 yards. That's efficiency like we were talking about with Chris Hannibal. And we also talked about the Tehachapi passing game. How about Corey Lane? Yeah, three catches, 121 yards. Not a bad, not a bad day over there for the Warriors. Preston Hodges over at Independence, 16 of 24 passing, 136 yards. 31 uh, for 104. I mean, that's, uh, that's a good performance by Independence. Yeah, that's really leaning on one guy. And a note on Tim Harris, you mentioned not getting enough credit. The, the guy is eight yards away from a 4,000-yard career. Wow. Um, he's at, sitting at 3,992 yards, which is something you don't see a lot in high school football. Special circumstances, school opening. He played varsity as a freshman, uh, and, and he's right there to, to, to hit that milestone this week against Foothill. Well, let's hope he does. And congrats to uh, Tim Harris and congrats to Coach Varela for uh, that, that outstanding accomplishment for sure. 
When we get back, we'll uh, talk to our co-players of the week here on the Bright House Network's High School Football Preview Show. Wow, I can't believe you just told me that. Well, I felt that I should be honest with you about the type of stuff I'm into. I'm into it too. You are? I'm all over it. Living room, bedroom, in the shower. Well, do you want to do it here? Now? Well, yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay. Bakersfield On Demand on Bright House Network's Digital Channel 300 brings you a look at community events in and around Kern County. Our area has a wide variety of local events like festivals, cook-offs, galas, parades, and much more. Bright House Networks invite you to tune to Bakersfield On Demand and see a sampling of Kern County events from the comfort of your own home. Make Bright House Networks Digital Channel 300 your portal to local programming. So, you got home late and missed the start of your favorite show. It's okay. You've got Bright House Networks, exclusively delivering Start Over, so you can restart the program from the beginning, even if you tuned in at the end. What's that? Someone's calling? No problem. Pause the restarted show and answer the phone without missing a minute of the story. Another free perk with your digital service. So, if you haven't tried Start Over yet, now's a great time to start. Enjoy more TV on your terms. Start Over, exclusively from Bright House Networks. Welcome back to the preview show here on Bright House Networks. For the first time this year, Zach, we have co-players of the week. Yeah, we couldn't decide. Austin T. Arena, a great night at the game that we saw, but uh, and Chris Hannibal doing some great things down the road in Independence for the Drillers, too, so we picked both of them. Well, let's hear what Austin T. Harina from Wasco High School had to say about his accomplishment. Uh, we were pretty excited to go into a game being, uh, knowing that we were expected to be beaten and get upset by DCHS. We knew it would be a good game with our running game and their passing game to see what was going to happen. When I found out that they said all they had to do was shut me down and our offense would be stopped and done, we wouldn't have anything else left. Um, well, it was kind of, we thought we were going to have it easy after and be like, it's not going to go as, as we planned and that it would be somewhat easy if we would get our blocks down and everything working. Um, probably when I broke out on a counter and stepped on one of their guys into another one and scored. Um, during practices we work hard and then we get pushed to see how long we'll last and then with all the conditioning and running we do and with our coaches being able to help us and show us what much, what much more we need to do and how we need to do it, and it's been working out for us. Uh, we're going into it thinking it's another big game and we've got to keep working our way up and not let up as we did and just go in doing our best. I'm looking forward towards the attack game the most, thinking it's going to be our biggest challenge yet. Uh, a lot of us have been wanting to improve and make it to the next level and continue to play in December and make it past the first playoff game and go to a Valley. Uh, wanting to improve and help my team out better and not let up any way or get hurt in any way possible and just keep us strong. Um, a lot of them had to do with a lot of stiff ones and just cutting off of my blockers and just following them and just hitting the holes hard. You know, I'll tell you how he broke all those tackles, Zach. It was his weight room for sure. I mean, that's uh, I always preach how important the weight room is for any any high school athlete, for anybody, and in, in, you know, not necessarily playing a sport, but certainly if you're going to be a running back of the caliber of Austin T. Harina, the weight room definitely helps. And you know, let's take a look at some more of his highlights just to go over some of his numbers again: 182 rush yards, 106 receiving yards, five touchdowns, six PATs. I mean, I can go on and on well, about you, it. You get the feeling he could have done a lot more, too, if he had gotten the opportunity. But it, by, by the time the fourth quarter started, the game was over. I mean, 
Uh, T Arena just a special back like we see. And, and you mentioned the weight room. you, you got to give credit to Wasco's school district as well and the, and the community of Wasco that's given a lot of money to that school district. They have some brand new facilities up there, a brand new weight room, and uh, and the Tigers football team has really taken off in the last five years because of that. Yeah, uh, they, they have a great AD leading them as well, Raw Wrangle. But you know, as, as much as credit as we give to Austin T Arena, you have to give credit to his offensive line. I mean, look at them absolutely. opening up huge holes. Uh, you see a lot of downfield blocking going on there. But I mean, this play right there is arm tackling T Arena just taking it in himself. Uh, you, I, I kind of like those helmets, Zach. You know, the, the five yeah, on it. That, real classic look, isn't it? It's got that Alabama vibe to it. So uh, They're playing like Alabama. But yeah, you, you're right. The big uglies up front. you got to give credit to those offensive linemen who never seem to get enough of it. Uh, but they certainly did a fantastic job as well. Our other player of the week, playing, like I said, a little bit down the road from Bakersfield Christian at Independence High School, was Bakersfield quarterback Chris Hannibal. Uh, what motiv motivated me uh, Friday was how they got a new quarterback and how league starting and all the big hype about who's going to win league with the powerhouse. A play that stood out for me was when uh, my, my receiver caught a, uh, just a two-yard hitch and turned it into a huge game for a touchdown. The team I'm looking forward to playing is Stockdale once they get DJ Martin back. That'll be a good, big opportunity for our D. Oh, this, this, my strategy is do the same thing I did last game, put our, uh, put our team in the right place and uh, just play as hard as I can. One of my personal goals is to take my team to the Valley. That's about it. You know, funny story about Chris Hannibal. Last year I was out at a driller's practice before one of their big playoff games or maybe before they played Centennial, before a big game, and I'm out there expecting to see Brian Burrell and, and uh, Walter Hunt and some of the great stars they had on last year's team. And here's this kid throwing absolute BBs from under center, looks as athletic as all get up, throwing real accurate passes to all of his receivers in a seven-on-seven -seven drill and everything. And I pulled Coach Paul Gola aside and I said, Coach, who is that guy? And he said, no, that's Chris Hannibal. He's our quarterback for next year. And I said, well, you guys aren't going to drop off much then, are you? And he kind of laughed and he said, no, I don't think so. And that's no disrespect to Brian Burrell, who's a fantastic high school quarterback now at Bakersfield College. But uh, um, Hannibal is the real deal, a dual threat quarterback who can, who can hurt you in a lot of ways. Well, I hope we uh, get the chance to see him here on Bright House Network. And I'm sure we will down the line. You know, BHS has a lot of marquee matchups coming up later on down the line. Zach, it's our favorite time of the show, predictions. I think I'm up on you, Zach, to be honest. I think I'm up on you. We last have week. To, we meant to tally that up. I'm not so sure about well, that. Well, I, I was plus one heading into last week, and uh, depending on what we, yeah, we haven't done the math. My right memory yet. is short when it comes to these things, but let's, exactly. let's fire away. It has to be because we're wrong enough. Uh, North and East, our game of the week. I'm going to go ahead and take the Blades. I, I've got a lot of faith in Dave Thorpe and his coaching staff right now, finding ways to win close games, stay in games that maybe they shouldn't be in, and I think they find a way this week. I have a lot of faith in Coach Thorpe as well, and I mean, I love the guy. I've known him for a while. You know, their coaching staff over there, pretty good friends of my parents and whatnot. But, but you I don't think, have that faith. I think I'm going to take North in this one, Zach. When it when it comes down to business, I think that North can get the job done. I think it'll be a great game. I think North gets it done though in the end. Highland and Garces, who do you have, Zach? I'm taking the Rams. I, you know, especially without Zach Pasco at quarterback for Highland, it's going to be a tough road to hoe. And I don't think Garces loses a game the rest of the way. Yeah, you said Pasquale MCL tear, and I was like, oh, that just cued the little uh, I, the light bulb on my head. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Garces for sure in this one again. Uh, Bakersfield versus Front uh, Frontier. Like I'm going to go with the Drillers. You'll go with the Drillers. So will I. Like I said, I think Frontier plays better this week. I don't think they can beat BHS. Stockdale versus Liberty, another huge game. The last week without DJ Martin for the uh, Mustangs. I'm going to take an upset in this one. I think the Mustangs get it done. Oh. I think the 0-6 Stockdale Mustangs beat the 5-1 and Liberty Patriots. I, I don't know why. Call it a gut feeling. I think Stockdale's been playing a little bit better. I think Liberty has been winning a lot of close games, and those things tend to even out over time. So I'll go with Stockdale this week. Well, with Jeremy Bispo back in the Stockdale lineup, I mean, he certainly helps the cause. However, I'm going to have to go with Liberty, Zach. Fair enough. South against Ridgeview, much like Garces, I'm not going to pick against Ridgeview in a league game. I think the Wolfpack rolls. I, I don't really think there's much explanation needing to be done there. You just pretty much said it. Ridgeview in league is uh, unstoppable. At least they look unstoppable right now. South is going to have to capitalize on every single mistake that Ridgeview makes. I think Ridgeview takes this. And our final game that we're going to predict, Independence versus Centennial. I'm going to have to go with the Golden Hawks. Just Independence really hasn't shown me uh, much this year to get hyped about. Uh, Independence, better on offense, and Centennial has some issues on the, on the defensive side of the ball, but I don't think they can keep up with the Golden Hawks. 
Well, when we come back, we'll hear from both head coaches from North and East coming up on the High School Football Preview Show. I love my Bright House Network's DVR. It's always there when I need it. And now I love my DVR even more now that I've upgraded to the whole house DVR. I can record my favorite programs in one room and watch them on any TV in my DVR network with options to record up to 120 hours of HD shows. More shows, more rooms, more flexibility, more love. Learn more about Bright House Network's Whole House DVR at brighthouse.com slash DVR. Wow, I can't believe you just told me that. Well, I felt that I should be honest with you about the type of stuff I'm into. I'm into it too. You are? I'm all over it. Living room, bedroom, in the shower. Well, do you want to do it here? Now? Well, yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay. This phone never gets put down. Good thing we have home phone with unlimited nationwide calling from Bright House Networks. I can call my family as often as I want to keep them in the loop on the new place. And Jack calls his college buddies every time their team scores, at any sport, at any time. And being able to keep our same phone number when we switched to Bright House was great. It's more than home phone. It's anytime, anywhere phone. Stay in touch with Bright House Network's home phone for as little as $20 more per month. Call or visit brighthouse.com today. School football preview show here on Bright House Networks. North at East coming up at the top of the hour from the east side of Bakersfield, Zach, where I live. But uh, you know, before we get into that, let's hear what both head coaches have to say. First, North head coach Cy Silver. Uh, this year, our team has uh, done a decent oh. job of competing in games. We, uh, we start a lot of seniors, and uh, that experience has been beneficial for us. Um, we've had some areas we struggled in, but um, defensively, we've, we've been strong, and we've done some good things on the other side of the ball as well. We're learning a new system. The kids are doing a good job of working, uh, but we got a lot of things to get better at, and um, we're going to work every day to get better at them, so we're, we're still trying to get after it every single day in practice. Defensively, we're very strong. We have a, a good uh, defensive line. Those kids have been kind of the rock on our defense all year. Uh, tough kids, uh, senior heavy. Um, A.J. Heath, uh, nose tackle, um, strong returner from last year. has done a great job of being kind of the focus of our defensive front. And um, John Palacios, another defensive player uh, on the line, defensive end, has been a, uh, a strong player for us as well. We have a few other guys, um, Gunnar Chris, Arpatino, and uh, Lauren Porter and Gavin Amos are kids that have done a good job of playing defensive line and helping us out. And then uh, also have some strong kids in the defensive backfield and in linebacker position. So those guys together have played as a unit and kind of been the, the I don't know, I'd say the spark for our team this year. Offensively, we have, uh, we've learned a new system this year from they've been used to last year. So um, running the ball uh, out of kind of power sets and uh, our kids have done a good job. We've got some young linemen um, and some seniors on the line that have uh, kind of helped work together to, to learn the new system. Uh, we run the ball well and uh, it's a senior tailback. Brody Smith has been a leader for us offensively. And uh, we've had two quarterbacks, uh, Austin Howard, a junior, and Nathan Sosi, a senior, that have been uh, two kids that have helped, you know, kind of run the run the offense and, and get our kids in the right spot. So um, we're, we're, uh, we're getting there. It's a, it's a process always, all year, but our kids are doing a good job learning the system. So, you know, East offense uh, on film, they've uh, been able to throw the ball. They have some big targets, big weapons. So uh, we have to make sure we can we can cover those big targets, make sure that we are in the right position. Uh, if we get out of position or make mistakes in the defensive backfield, it could be uh, a rough night. But um, again, our defensive line has to control line scrimmage, get pressure on the quarterback. I think if we pressure the quarterback, we will uh, you know, cause some balls to be thrown, you know, errant balls, and we can make some picks, get some turnovers, and capitalize on it. And uh, we got to shut down the run, make those guys have to throw the ball a lot, and uh, just play defense. So I think we're uh, I think we're in a good position. They spread you out a little bit and try to, you know, make the, you know, 
make the uh, the spacing they need for their passing game. So if we can uh, control the line of scrimmage and get pressure, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, you know, offensively, uh, you know, watching film with those guys again, they, they have some big kids, some talented kids. I think we have to establish the line of scrimmage as, as ours. You know, if we can get off the ball and stay low, get some movement from those guys and pressure on them to kind of get in the box and, and stop our run, um, then we'll be able to throw the ball a little bit and uh, you know, get outside and do some good things. Our kids have worked hard to, uh, to, to learn what they're doing on the defensive side. So we just got to be smart, play hard, don't make mistakes. For us, it's making mistakes. We don't, you know, we got to take care of the football. We got to control the ball. We got to have it for, you know, quite a few plays in the offensive side, and uh, not put our defense on the field for a, a lot of time. So I think that's the other thing. You know, our defense has to be off the field. We have to be on the field. So if we control the ball, time possession, and move the ball, or running the football, we'll be okay. You know, Zach, both head coaches in their first season at their respective schools. So this matchup could potentially come down to who makes the right call at the right time. Yeah, and both have a lot of pride in those programs. I mean, Cy Silver. His dad, Tony Silver, the longtime coach at North, uh, and he's taken over for the program now. And Dave Thorpe left a, a pretty good job at BC to coach his alma mater at East and, and kind of bring them out of the dregs. So uh, let's talk to Dave Thorpe, the East High, he, excuse me, East High head coach, and see what he had to say. It's our first year as a, a coaching staff, um, a group that is uh, trying to improve every day. We've just, since day one, we've just tried to get better every day, get better every play, get better every game. Yeah, I think our quarterback, Marcus Rojas, uh, our two uh, tailbacks, uh, Tanner Vieira and uh, Gio Seo, uh, doing a great job. Our receiver, Tevin Beasley, does a nice job, and we've got a good group of tight ends and linemen. Well, I think on defense, Jerry Lopez has been playing really well. Uh, DeAndre Churchill has been playing well. Leo Garcia has been playing very well. And uh, Javi, Javier uh, Hernandez has been doing a great job for us. Boy, I tell you, those guys are big and physical. They come right at you. they got some giants out there. They've got one guy 6'7". Um, we're just going to hang on for dear life and just hope for the best. Well, they've got big guys on defense too. Boy, they got a couple nose guards and or a couple tackles and a nose guard that fly around. Their backers fly around. And I tell you, Cy Silver does a great job with those guys. Those guys fly around. They're going to come out and they're going to hit you in the mouth. A very youthful team over on the east side there, Zach. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Dave Thorpe, I th we were just talking about it off camera, but before the season, he didn't have a lot of expectations for this group. Right. Um, from but here's what they a guy, lost last year. Right. right? They lost a, every significant contributor from last year's team. Here's a guy who's used to coaching Bakersfield College, one of the best junior college programs in the state, and uh, and and goes to the high school level on a team that didn't win a lot of games for the last several years. And he's he's probably going to have some growing pains there, but he's done a great job installing some discipline in that team, installing some schemes in that team that work, and and they've played really well. And you also can't forget uh, his coaching staff that he has along with. I mean, Rick Van Horn, that's a, that's a household name here. Sure. He was the blitz coach for the longest time. And then also his son is playing at Middle Tennessee State now, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, uh, Vince Van Horn is, is a Blue Raider at Middle Tennessee State in Murfreesboro, of all places. I just, like, just like saying the word. But, uh, you, you know, it's a great coaching staff. And then at North High, you've got a veteran team. And Cy Silver obviously knows what he's doing as well. So this should be a pretty good matchup we're about to see. Absolutely. So keep your sets tuned. We'll have it on here at the top of the hour. You've been watching the Bright House Network's high school football preview show. For Zach Ewing, I'm Matt Alvarez. We'll see you next time.